Johnny and welcome back to the Moshiks mainframe channel. This is Moshiks. Today I think we're just going to do some programming because I actually haven't prepared anything but as I was thinking about making this video a couple of hours ago I thought maybe uh, we'll look into something that was uh, mentioned to me in an email a couple of days ago. Somebody wrote to me and asked um, what is the parameter passing convention in uh, MVS, our beloved mainframe operating system. And so the parameter passing convention is, uh, is has been around since OS 360 for so about um, almost 60 years now. And but before I, I didn't really want to do a, like a series of slides or anything. So I thought we'd just sit down and I'll show you how I do parameter passing uh, by doing it in assembler and uh, mainframe assembler. And so I have my terminal here connected to my MBS 3.8 running in, uh, in my cloud. And so why don't we just log in and, uh, and just do some uh, recreation programming. So uh, let's see, um, I have here a general header with job uh, header that I can use for creating uh, uh, assembler jobs and uh, we'll use this and then start coding uh, parameter pattern we'll like that and so um, what we're going to show in this video is how to pass a parameter here uh, let's just call it uh, parameter of uh, consisting of a string 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's not a number, that's not 12,345, that's just a string. In parameter there's no um, semantic understanding what you're passing obviously. It is totally up to the caller and the callee. So the caller, in a, when you have a job like this, a batch job, the caller is the initiator. The initiator is going to run this job, um, just 2 in my case, or it could be just 3. Um, so when this JCL is going to get executed, it's going to get parsed, and then um, and then just 2 will assign an initiator to it. The initiator is just an empty uh, address space waiting for some work, and then uh, once work arrives, the initiator will attach a task which is going to be our assembler program and call it and uh, by calling it it will pass the parameter that's coded here in this uh, procedure in this assembler fx uh, compile and go procedure we pass it this uh, parameter and so the initiator will pass exactly the string one two three four five over to the callee to the program that we're just about to write so um i'll just going to write and comment as i write um, just uh, I'm sure that uh, there's going to be a lot of people saying that this can be done in a in a much nicer way and I'm sure you're right um, so let's have columns here okay so so we say here print gen print gen make sure that we expand the macros uh, later on once the problem is running fine and it's been debugged you can uh, write no gen like uh, such as like this uh, but uh, in our case we leave it gen uh, let's do caps on and I'll just go coding uh, read farm something like that uh, code section and then we'll just get started of course as you know in assembler it is up to us um, to um, uh, to uh, save the registers of the calling program so so we call it something like this uh, let's say save callers registers and uh, I'm going to explain a lot here and of course a lot of people will know exactly what's going on but maybe for some of the uh, people who do this uh, for the first time it's not going to hurt if I explain what it is exactly I'm doing here on the keyboard um, so we're saving the, the registers of the caller starting from 12 all around to 14 and uh, you see here I have the notation R so that we know what is a register 
but um, obviously assembler only knows the register number because that's what's actually going to be written into the object file so we go down uh, so it's uh, obvious to everybody and uh, and we do the register equate so we do r1 uh, equates to 1 and then we can do this uh, so we do like this I have obviously the equates um, uh, copied here somewhere but I'm just going to do it all on the keyboard so that um, So that people can follow better and of course as you can see typing thinking and uh, speaking uh, doesn't come uh, uh, simply to me uh, so that's why you see a lot of here a lot of as a lot of mm, a lot of thinking uh, because i need to actually think these things through as i speak and i'm not a particular fast thinker anyway so um, So we have here the basics uh, done. So now for now, whenever we say R14, uh, the assembler will know that we mean 14. So R14 means nothing to the assembler. Every time it encounters an R14 or an R12, it goes down here to the equate section and it just takes whatever is written here as the replacement for what's written on the left side. All right, so um, we were here. Copy that, and then uh, let's just say we use. Let me think here. From now on, we use the base register of twelve. Yep, I don't think I'm gonna need that. And so what? Uh, so we tell now the assembler which base register to use for. To build out the addresses throughout the assembly program until we we'll drop this register obviously um, so what i think we're going to do is we just we enter the program we first determine uh, the length of the parameter field we show the length of a parameter field in a wto meaning to the operator console and then we'll show the uh, content of the parameter field to the uh, console so this way we don't have to have a print file or anything it's all very simple obviously in a, in a production environment if you uh, write too many uh, times to the operator on the console uh, somebody's going to get upset uh, when i was uh, uh, doing uh, professional mainframe programming in the military this was uh, strictly forbidden um, and in the military you can just take people who don't do it and people don't do it I think in a commercial environment uh, just telling people don't do it is sometimes not enough maybe they have to be afraid they're gonna lose the job or something um, to reinforce it uh, um, so now we will of course need a save area uh, we're gonna spec out uh, afterwards um, so we got the save area literal pool uh, this means that the literals used uh, throughout the assembly are going to be stored right after uh, the code word to the assembly literal pool and you always, always want to have this as close as possible to the end of your code because the literal pool needs to fit within the first 4096 bytes which is the uh, standard length of an assembly program it can be more but uh, people typically try to fit it into a, uh, a memory page 4096 um, uh, so that you don't have to start using uh, several usings uh, base addresses, it's a base registers, etc. So always try to fit it within 4096, including the literal pool, which includes, of course, the save area um, for the uh, for the uh, for the um, for the callers register. And then, uh, of course, we need to load the address of the save area.
Okay. All right, so uh, so this is done. So now we can say here uh, something like, um, well, um, let's just uh, format this nicely, and then. So if you have any questions, then I guess uh, you you will have to uh, post them in the comments below this video because there's no way to interrupt me as I'm doing this right now, obviously. Um, so by convention, um, the address of the parameter field is stored in register one. So whenever MVS calls a program, um, it will put in the address of the parameter field in register one that's the convention okay so the email that i got about what's the convention that's it that's a convention so you get uh in register one whenever we are called as as this program is being called uh, it will have in register one the address of the uh, the save uh, of the parameters so it's the address of course not the content okay so um so by doing it this way uh, we can say that uh, address, right? So it's the address that we're getting here. And then uh, we load half. So um, in the first two bytes, the, the save area in memory is like this. Um, so it's going to be a, um, a memory, some field in, in the memory that's going to be passed to us in our virtual memory, in our address space. And it's going to have two bytes. Um, it's called BB, which contain the length of, of the parameter field because it, obviously it's variable. It's up to 100 bytes long. That's what is allowed in the JCL, up to 100. If you code it with uh, apostrophes, then the, the apostrophes don't count. If you code it with, uh, with uh, parentheses, then parentheses count. So a slight difference there. So if you do it right, you gain two bytes. And, uh, and so you have up to 100, uh, including a continuation, of course, uh, because uh, you would have to con do the continuation there. But uh, it's unusual to code up to 100, but you could up to 100. So to, um, to represent 100, two bytes is enough. And so um, we'll have the length of the parameter field uh, at the very beginning, two bytes long. And then we'll have uh, the variable parameter field. So since we don't know, as the program being called, we don't know how long the parameter field it is. It could be anything. We first have to find out how long it is from the first two bytes. How do we do that? We just say, we um, so we store here in register two now the address of the, of, um, the parameter field. And forgive my uh, typos here. And then we load into register three the um, the first two bytes of what's stored in register two. That's why we transferring this over here. So now we'll have the length. Uh, okay. So now we have the length of the parameter field and. Uh, And so, um, so now where is the actual payload? Where, where do we find one, two, three, four, five of the string over here? Well, that's actually quite easy. So we load the address, LA means load address um, of um, two bytes off of register two, because um, um, register two points to the address of the parameter. And then so we load now the um, two bytes off, that's a displacement here, of register two, right? So address of first byte of field. So that's the first, that's the address of the of where this one, where this byte here resides, one. Um, so the, the, we load the address of the first byte of the payload. 
So we now have in register 3 the length, so we know exactly how long this field is. It's in this case, uh, we can use this here, one, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it's 5 uh, bytes long. So R3 is going to contain 5, and then we'll, lo we'll load here the address of uh, the um, where the first character is that we want to look at. So um, I think that's uh, good enough for now. And uh, so I think at this point what we could do is actually uh, specify um, uh, do a simple WQO to the um, write to the operator uh, macro to tell the operator how long the parameter field is. That's the easiest way to deal with it. So this way we don't need to specify any any kind of uh, any kind of uh, print output. So we'll say here uh, print out. Print on console uh, length of parameter field. Okay, so, uh, sorry about this. And so now we just say, um, how could we do this? So we do need to convert this number, is of course stored now in binary format. Uh, R3 contains a binary representation of the of the length of five. So we need to start to make this human readable. So we convert it to decimal. And then of course we need to unpack it. Um, I'm not gonna go into the unpack instruction because uh, I've, I've uh, had this before and um, not really, it's, it's a, a longer explanation how numbers are being stored when they're um, when they're decimal. And now um, let's see. Um, so WTO is the macro that writes on the console, and so we say parameter um, length. Um, so therefore. We now move this number here that we unpacked, um, this one, the unpacked, into this field. So what we do here, what what's happening here is we have a, an instruction and we're changing the, the content of the instruction before we execute the instruction. There's other ways to do it. We could, we could use the execute instruction or any other ways. And I'm sure people will have the favorite ways to do this, but yeah, uh, we use here the address of this instruction. So this is this is a macro, and uh, by putting here WTP, um, I could put in C for console. Um, we now move into this instruction as it is represented in memory during the execution of this program. We're changing this instruction. Uh, we're just changing what what comes after here. So how do we do that? We say. Um, WTC plus some number, which uh, I don't know, maybe 18, let me count. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, plus seven, so uh, 20. It's actually right. And then with a length of three, I think is enough. And okay, so by doing that, oops, uh, we now write into this instruction because what's happening is that the assembler is going to create an object file, and when it loads the object file in memory, there's going to be this instruction is going to be coded like that. But just before we execute it, we're putting in here at this spot here where the where the cursor is right now. We're going to put in here a number that we change from binary to unpacked and we're going to put it here. So um, so this way when the WTO gets executed you get executed not as param length and then empty 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 but it's going to get param length with the string that we copied in here in human readable format. 
So I hope that makes sense. Um, so we got that done. Uh, and now we proceed to uh, putting in also the, the payload itself uh, to the console of the operator. But I think actually before we do that, we want to first check if there no, what happens if no parameter is specified, then we could get some garbage there. So if no parameter is being specified, um, then we just write to the, to the console that no parameter was specified. So we could do this by saying compare. Um, so we say here was a param specified. If this is zero, then we just say then um, branch um, branch went zero to no param, and then uh, we'll do something here at this spot. Uh, but of course, this uh, we'll have to first uh, load into register six. So just so we have it also saved in register six. Um, so, and now um, we can just uh, print. So we know at this point, after this instruction, we know that we do have a parameter because it's not zero. So therefore, um, we just say, great, we do have a parameter. And uh, just put it here. So we do have a parameter. OK, so this is just a comment, obviously. And now we can start to prepare to put this uh, parameter on the console as well, so that the um, the console operator we could have done this maybe just before we actually put in this wto some people will argue and you're probably right um but i'm, I'm going here uh, i'm thinking and i'm going as we're as we're making the video so i haven't really thought too much about it but why don't we um do the same thing again we have the wtol that we want to change which says uh wto Arms and make this extra wide so because we don't know how long it's going to be we should in theory make this 100 long because that's the maximum it's going to be passed by the JCL but uh, just to make things simple with continuation we make it a little bit shorter okay so so now we will do the same thing again so now we're going to move into this uh, instruction here we're going to move the payload I guess from this byte on, which is one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so um, so let's do this. Um, so we load into register five the um, the address of this instruction plus how much did we say? Eight plus seven, fifteen. Uh, of WTO. So we let we address should be. So we load into register for the address of this very next instruction. Why? Because we add 15 bytes. So uh, the address, uh, starting address of this instruction, five, uh, 15 bytes in, which brings us exactly here and we load the address of this spot here in memory uh, into the, uh, register 4. So that's quite simple, obviously, uh, nothing. And then we move, um, we move character, which is the same thing we did here. So MV MVC means move character. And let's see if we have uh, If this is explained anywhere, uh, oh yeah, I like this website a lot. 
So uh, MVC is used to copy characters values from one location to, to another. Um, and of course the syntax is displacement, length, and base register. And then for the part, the, for the, the, the origin of the source field, we have destination, uh, uh, displacement, and base register. So the length is determined by uh, what we put in here and not by the source. So that's uh, sometimes confusing to people that we are limited to what we specify here. So if even if this is, um, I don't know, 50 bytes, if we say here 10, then only the first 10 will be copied and not all 50. So it's the destination that decides the length and not the source. And of course, um, with this simple instruction, we can only move 256 uh, bytes at a time. Uh, there's another instruction, MVCL, which lets us do more than that. Um, and by the way, so it is possible that source and destination may overlap. Uh, in fact, this is one way, for instance, to empty a field very quickly, um, is to make the source and destination overlap. Um, this is a storage to storage instruction, so one of the slowest instructions that there is on the um, mainframe architecture and the length is coded as one byte so uh, because of course one byte can indicate up to 256 um, um, and of course as one less than the actual value so um, and um, yeah so I think if you can find this uh, website instructions for using character data at the uh, this uh, this university, I think it's quite uh, quite useful. So let's do uh, this instruction here. As we said here, maybe we put the I put in here the format so you can follow exactly what we're doing by looking at this. So um, where were we? Move character, and then we say uh, move character displacement zero and uh, length is uh, register six because we copy the length from register three here to get the length of the parameter field we copy it in the register six and um, off so uh, displacement zero we don't want any displacement but we want the length that's in register six and then uh, we say uh, the base register is register four um, because we loaded in register 4 the address of the very next instruction uh, 15 bytes down. So that makes sense. Uh, I think that's uh, that's correct. And then we want 0 uh, displacement of register 2 because register 2 uh, points um, to the first byte of the payload. Remember that we first we loaded the address from register 1, then we uh, went 2 bytes uh, over because the first two bytes is the length and we loaded that in register 2 the address of the first two bytes after the beginning of the whole parameter field which is exactly here so we um, by doing that now we're copying the content of what's in here which points to this place and we're copying with a maximum length which was given to us uh, by the uh, by MVS um, and we copied it in, in this location over here okay so that was that's really all there is to it um, and then we execute the um, then of course we execute the uh, the WTO instruction and uh, so now we have to deal with the case when there is no parameter uh, so which means that actually uh, and so we need to jump around uh, branch to end program so I something like this and program so now we jump around the case where there is no parameter um, and uh, when there is no parameter it's actually uh, exactly the same thing again um, we'll just uh, we could well, do we want to do this really? Uh, or do we want to? Um, well, I think we. I think we could do it. So, 
why don't we uh, specify the same thing again and uh, just say uh, no parameter okay let's uh, format this right okay so um, we just say in this case there is no parameter we just say WTO no parameters given by color something like that so we don't really have to calculate or, or put anything into this WTO because we know it's zero and so then we just uh, uh, go to end I guess yeah okay so uh, this this basically this branch goes around this no parameter um, so that um, from the param no parameter we can go straight to the end so uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's uh, that's how we're going to do it and so uh, at the or we could just say close so maybe that makes it easier to read and so now at this point uh, it's really quite simple uh, we say uh, we just have to um, put in the parameters uh, again obviously oops there's something missing here um, so we have to restore the colors you know the colors uh, registers so where are we here yeah something reload colors Thanks. and um, so that's uh, we just uh, put everything back in its place uh, uh, 13 yes so that's what we used to 12 so from 12 to 14 yeah and then uh, we just say we reset the return code which uh, in our case here return code contains uh, a register 15 returns uh, the, the return code that we see in the job step so we set to zero um, that's just a very that's the fastest way sr means subtract register it's the fastest way to set something to zero of all the instructions there's many ways to do it but uh, that's the it's a very fast instruction because it's a registered register so we uh, deduct um, we do an arithmetic dedu um, deduct you know we, we remove zero the re content register is 15 from register 15. sorry if i'm not speaking very clearly i'm thinking as we go and then of course uh, we branch to uh, register 14 which is the address of the caller return to mama okay so lt org oh and of course we have here the uh, fields for the decimal and the unpacked which we have to put in so we put this right after the save area and as i mentioned you want the save area to be as close as possible to the end of the program so um, so we put that first and we say yes zero and that would be packed with a length of uh, what was it four I think and um, yeah I think that's really all there is to it um, have we forgotten anything Basically everything that we need. Uh, we have the C section, um, the code section. Nothing to do with giving birth here, and then store the registers. Um, we use register twelve, and 
uh, then uh, here's the part that's really the most interesting part we get the parameter field from register 1 and store it in register 2 we get the length which is the, f the first two bytes so load half from the parameter field and then we store two bytes down from register 2 as the beginning address of the parameter field then we do um, convert this number that we've registered 3 to decimal convert to decimal we must unpack it so it becomes human readable so one byte off from uh, numdeck goes into deck and we have that specified here packed and uh, and then we move uh, we move uh, this field here into uh, this instruction and we are modifying the instruction as we go <laughs> just before we execute it um, plus 20 so let's check again one two three five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen yeah so plus seven that, that's correct three and um, then we copy the register three and register six because we're gonna compare here to see if register three is zero if it's not if it's uh, zero we go to no parm and we just print this wto uh, if it's not zero which means we have a parameter then we load into register 4 the address of this uh, WTO instruction and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 plus 7 so that's 15 yep that's correct and then we do uh, we move displacement 0 with length uh, that we got from here off register 4 which is the address of this uh, instruction with displacement 0 um, and register 2 which points to the beginning of the payload so if you follow my mouth uh, copy workload to next instruction okay um, which is what we also could put in here into this MVC and more or less and uh, okay um, don't know what's gonna happen terminated there must be an error here somewhere what have we done wrong uh, we have an issue with this uh, um, yeah of course yeah that would of course cause the error let's see what's uh, what's wrong let me check and uh, go back uh, so what is it the unpack instruction is wrong so what would be wrong here? Let's see. Uh, unpack. So we do have. Hmm. Oh, of course. Okay, we got a warning, which is not good. And we see here that actually it did work, but we still need to fix it. So uh, we got a warning, but this still executed fine. The, uh, we got here 0, 05 as the parameter length. And I think we see three fields here because we have three here. Let me see. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so 
so we got here the length now 0, 05 and we got correctly the uh, parameters and um, and we still have somewhere here this error saying so let's see what the issue here is uh, oh yeah of course we need load register so oops what did I do now oh, here it is um, it needs to be load register obviously and so typo here and yeah we need that I make this mistake often so it needs to be load register okay. and because it's registered to register so we uh, eight and seven yeah and now we have um, return code zero and we have the parameter length and the parameter and this went through fine so I will put this uh, program in my uh, github repository which is moshix.mbs and um, I will put in here um, a link to this repository in the description below this video so you can go find this uh, program and uh, but that's really simple to do and uh, oops again so what's going on here okay so um, here's the program again uh, we just saved the registers here we we determine the length first the address then the length then the address of the payload starting from the first byte other than just the count uh, the first two bytes before and that's the parameter convention remember that we have up to 100 here in the JCL um, depending if you have uh, parentheses or apostrophes if you have apostrophes they don't count if you have parentheses they do count as two bytes uh, for opening and closing and then um, so then uh, most of the code that we have here really just deals with the fact that we need to show this on the operator console um, but if we don't need to show this to the operator console then uh, probably about 30% uh, of the program is gone uh, it becomes much easier then we would have something like a select saying if the input is this then let's do that if the input is this let's do that or it could be like I don't know a prime number calculation program that uh, just needs to know uh, up to how many numbers it needs to check or something like that whatever you need to do uh, and then the save area always very close oops there's uh, something I should have fixed here uh, you don't want empty lines um, earlier assemblers didn't deal well well with empty lines uh, this assembler can deal with it but you shouldn't have empty lines it's better to do something like this um, or something like um, you know eject three lines or something like that so um, and then the literal pool um, and immediately the save area after the literal pool so it all fits in within 4096 bytes but um, as we've seen here this is actually far shorter than 4096 4, bytes we will know exactly how long this program is uh, total length 128 so it's very very uh, small program but still you want this uh, save area to be the first thing right after the literal pool and then we have uh, the definition for the decimal field and the unpacked decimal field and uh, so that's all there really is to it and we show this number here then uh, if there is no we check if there is no um, if the length is zero which means there is no there are no parameters then we jump and show it here no parameters given by caller otherwise um, we know there is a parameter um, list and uh, so we take the address of this instruction uh, 15 bytes down uh, and then we move the payload which uh, we know the address of from register 2 um, and move it uh, into this string basically this instruction with an included string um, in here and we copy it in here and then we do WTO which is a macro it displays it on the console of the operator and then we branch to close so we don't show this WTO here 
and here we just restore the programs reset the um, the return code this will be more appropriate and then uh, go back to the caller which in our case of course is the initiator so um, that's it and then we have and that's it very simple program um, in total 67 lines with the JCL and as I said about a third of the program itself will fall away uh, if we didn't have the WTOs and uh, we can run this one more time that's it perfect all right I'll put this uh, program here in my uh, github repository for MBS and you can play with it and then I think in the next um, installment of this mini series, we'll look at uh, passing parameters to COBOL and then maybe to PL1 and uh, maybe RPG if you're interested. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, post them in the description, in the comment section below this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now would be a good time to subscribe. And um, I know that I've been using mostly S360 uh, assembler instructions. There are far more sophisticated instructions nowadays, but we're dealing here with MBS 3.8 on a 70, S370 machine. So I want to keep it as simple as possible because the learning effect is also bigger from the, um, from the simpler instructions. And I'm sure there's many other ways to do what I just did here. And there's probably a lot of stuff I didn't do as nicely as I could have. You're probably all right and I accept all criticism. Uh, I just wanted to show this and I didn't really plan for it, I just went, uh, I just programmed as we, as uh, as the video was moving, so didn't think too much about it. And that's uh, that's what we got. I think now would be probably a good time to do a no gen here, since we know the program works. Um, and then we have no more expansion, so the output becomes much cleaner because the WTO doesn't get expanded. So, um, as you can see, here it does get expanded, but uh, we know that the macro works fine. Sometimes it's useful to get the macros expanded so you can see if it, if it actually contaminates a register. That's what I use it for. But since uh, it doesn't touch any of the register that we use here, that's not an issue. That's why uh, we can actually uh, remove the macro expansion and the output becomes much cleaner and we just look at the uh, the um, source code here and the resulting object code and so I only had two little errors here this one forgot to put in the DS here and I had put an L load instead of load register which of course makes no sense all right so we got it all done and uh, any questions again post and thank you for watching and consider subscribing thank you goodbye